Okay, looks like we're on. Um, so I would like to open the uh, Georgetown Planning Board meeting for June 8, 2016, Memorial Town Hall, third floor. Uh, it's a few minutes after 7 o'clock. Uh, with the opening of the meeting, the first thing I'd like to do is officially welcome our new town planner, Heidi. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, I also um, would like to uh, publicly um, thank Howard for, I don't think anybody on the board understands how much time he has been putting in behind the scenes uh, to help out here. And um, in particular, a perfect example of um, our past town planner, uh, Heidi, uh, myself, and Howard took our Saturday morning to meet um, to go over, you know, catching up on making sure things didn't fall through the cracks. So um, I know he's not watching, but I sincerely appreciate all that he's done for the town. So with that said, uh, we'll go to approval of minutes. And I think the only thing I wanted to ask about that was what, what the game plan is. Well, my plan is I'm returning to my administrative assistant role ASAP. Yep. And so tonight I'll do my very best to just focus on my job here. And okay. I'm going to get these minutes in the next packet. Great. And I'll just make sure that I have the Heidi in the lurch over the next couple weeks start um, getting the backlog in. Okay. And does that sound okay? Or Perfect. would you rather I start with the backlog and then get, you know, would you rather I start with the past or just catch up immediately and then get to the past? Do you have a preference? I, well, I, I, I think I'd prefer the past to start and just in, okay. you know, start to catch up from backwards okay. forwards and okay. you know, we still are going through a transition um, period right now yeah. uh, in that regard. So. Um, You'll be spending time there, um, but yeah. uh, I would start there first. But so in the next packet, I'll put as many of the past minutes as I can wrap up. We'll start the we'll, oldest we'll start. We'll start catching no. up. Okay. Okay. That's thank you. Then. Thank you. Um, correspondence. Uh, we have Georgetown ZBA. There's a public hearing notice for Twiz Twizenwood Farm. Email from. Uh, attorney Jill Mann, Attorney Leaf, which we'll talk about later, and also public hearing for Palmer Lane Communication, which we'll talk about later. Next item on the agenda, vouchers. We do not have any this evening. And then we have a public hearing next, which is Palmer Lane, which is the only public hearing, but we have old business, which is Turning Leaf. Do I understand you got to get out of here by a certain time? Okay, so if the board is okay, we're going to flip the agenda and, and Turning Leaf. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that very much. <laughs> Excuse me. Jill Mann. <clears throat> Jill Mann here on behalf of Turning Leaf at Development LLC. Um, we're here to request that final release for the existing um, number of releases that we have. And just to give you a quick update, too, um, we did get the regulatory agreement signed for both units. So construction is going to begin on the brand new unit, and we're probably going to convey the um, 44 serial in the next few weeks, if even that long. Okay. And what I did just for Heidi is I just color-coded to show you where all the lots that were released. I just thought it'd be easy. I color-coded and I referenced all the Thank you. that I gave you. Because it was just, you know how we had, we released lot A in order to give it to the town. So there looked like there were 10 releases, but really there's only nine releases of saleable lots that lot A, okay. which you had pointed out because you're like, Jill, it doesn't have French because the way you did it. So we had to release lot A, and that's the one that's getting conveyed to the town. So we're this evening looking for a lease for 16, and then we'll come back on the 22nd with a request for um, a reduction in a tripartite, which I haven't even sent, submitted yet, and then a release for the five lots, because we will have sold lot A. And then here's the originals. Before I forget, um, yes, please. when you come back um, you. and you submit for June 22nd, yep. can you, I know our deadline has been 12 o'clock on Thursday. Can, well, we talked about that, yeah. Can you do it the day before? And yeah, that's what we talked day. about. That would be really appreciated. We're going to change the rules so that that way it ends up because yeah. it's really short. No, that's actually <laughs> after I had submitted and I talked to Heidi and she said, look, we're going to do it the day before. I said, perfect. Gotcha. Can I just, can I just ask one thing? You have Chaplain Hills Road on the 22nd and they're definitely submitting all the contracts. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
well they are, they paid their fee, their four thousand dollar fee, so now they're at like seventy five hundred to be paid and supposedly they're coming. I just want you to know you have that already on the twenty second. I'm sorry, I, I was distracted. Would you repeat oh, okay. you yourself? <laughs> so sorry. it's twenty second, Chapman Road yeah. is presenting. Okay. I don't know if you want to have that too. Just pointing it out. Got it. On the agenda. Yeah, I only suggested, I think that you've been getting quite a few calls from people who are looking to <laughs> buy, and they're like, scream it. Um, all right, so, let that, Mr. Chairman, may I make a motion? Please. I'll make a motion to release lot number 16, or should I just make it official, uh, approve the Form J release? Um, for uh, lot 16 of the definitive plan for training leave. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the release of lot 16, form J, for training leave subdivision. Um, any discussion? No discussion. In favor? Aye. 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 So there's one signature on this, on the form <coughs> J. Excuse me. Signed everybody just typically signed the release. <coughs> okay. I know, I don't know if it's a cold. I was telling Tilly, I don't know if it's cold or I'm an old lady who just developed allergies. Yeah, that's okay. Pollen is brutal. Is, yeah. Do you think it's that's what it is? Yeah. Even like They're this? killing me for the last four Yeah, days. exactly like that, Mike. My voice goes everybody. So everybody has just by I've you never had an allergy in my life. I've never had allergies. I've never had all of my Not at this time of the year. Well, it's, I, I, it, it's a, I, I thought it was like, oh, I thought dirt was kicking up. It's not dirt. No. So, Jill, can you, um, after you record it, can you send us a oh, copy, please? Absolutely, immediately. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I just, and then you can continue my color coding. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I missed that. <laughs> I'm going to notarize this. So I just have to ask everybody did you sign that for free act indeed? Totally. I think. <laughs> I'm taking everybody's yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. And hopefully, I okay. see you on the 20th. I'll, hope, I'll send it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we'll go to the public hearing, Palmer Lane. Yes. May I just, while we're, this is old business, right? Uh, turning leaf lot release, yeah. While we're still in old business. Yeah. Last meeting that we had, there was an a &R request. I believe tonight is 30 days. Uh, 20, 21 days, excuse me. Yeah, they, they never resubmitted. Um, Come to find out, nothing has been recorded with the town. There's been no stamp, there's been no file, no official filing. So that's where it stands. So official filing. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go to the uh, public hearing, and um, if the uh, if Dennis would uh, be willing to just present the updates, we don't probably need to go through the, the whole application again. Sorry, interrupt again, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, you need to get out. I need to uh, please allow the record to show that I've recused and I'm leaving the room. 710, okay. Thank you. Shh. Uh, yeah, please. If you would. Make a motion to reopen the public hearing regarding Palmer Lane continued from May 11, 2016. Second, please. Second. Motion's been made and it's been seconded to uh, reopen the public hearing for Palmer Lane, which is continued from May 11, 2016. Uh, any discussion? No discussion, all in favor, aye, aye. and one abstain. So um, at the last meeting, uh, we had a lengthy discussion with the fire chief about the uh, end of the proposed road. Um, and the discussion was relative to the wide turnaround versus a cul-de-sac. And uh, we were challenged to meet with the uh, fire chief and discuss this issue and try to come to some agreement. So we did have a meeting uh, with uh, 
the chief and talked about it and um, we wanted to do some measuring as far as the turning radius of the truck was concerned to make sure that uh, we were not only designing this Y correctly, but also if we had to do a cul-de-sac that we would be able to match uh, the requirements. Uh, he suggested that we have another meeting with him along with uh, a fellow named Matt Allen, and I forget the other fellow's name. Um, uh, I believe they're from county um, planning or they were fire department uh, experts from the county. So we did meet with them and we also talked about widening the pavement at the Y instead of 20 feet coming in to widen it to give them plenty of room to get turned around uh, in that area and also widening the driveway and as it, as it uh, goes into the house to give them plenty of room to get their truck in, in there for servicing the house. And as it turns out, the result of those two meetings was uh, that uh, we drew the <coughs> up and we do have a letter that uh, came to the planning uh, board that basically says that uh, this modification is acceptable. And uh, I believe you have copies of that. If not, I have a copy that I actually picked up today. So, um, so there was a wider pavement there. There's also a uh, uh, patched area for a zone that's considered no parking with a couple of signs that will be placed on each side that say no parking. So nobody will be parking in that area because that's another concern that they had was uh, if people did park there and there was an emergency, fire apparatus couldn't get in there to properly service. So and also having a wider pavement area, we were talking about that, saying that well if there's a lot of snow and there's no room to plow the snow back far enough that at least it gives them room enough to get uh, their fire truck in there and, and get turned around. So the wider pavement is something that they thought would be acceptable in this case and that's kind of what we had for a discussion and that's really the only change that we have. Uh, we did, based on that, we did revise uh, the uh, go through and check the drainage analysis because there was a little bit of additional pavement in this area. Uh, because of the width of the uh, pavement here, we didn't have room enough to put the sidewalk in, so we, put the, we, we brought the sidewalk uh, to end or start down at the beginning of the Y instead of up in this area, which we felt we had plenty of pavement there for people to walk on and whatnot. So, so, uh, and so we did submit that with the, our, our um, some more uh, calculations for the, uh, for the impervious surface and uh, submitted that with this uh, modification of the plan, submitted that to the, to the, uh, to the town engineer for that. Um, we did get a letter back from Mr. Graham. There were a few issues on that that needed to be addressed. I didn't make those changes on this plan set because it didn't want to confuse the issue, but whatever uh, those suggestions were by Mr. Graham, we certainly can incorporate those as part of uh, an approval process. Uh, this condition. So, um, this is Larry. This is your June sixth. Correct. Yeah. And those few issues are something certainly we can incorporate in, in uh, as, as prior to having final plans uh, signed. So I think with that, um, I don't know if there's anything else that we were challenged to do, but uh, so we can answer any, any questions the board has. <coughs> I think, um, I guess what I'd like to do is uh, go to Larry first, and then uh, we'll, there doesn't seem to be anybody from the public, and we'll go to the board. Um, so, take it away. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Dennis referred to my June 6 letter, which has uh, about five different things on it that I suggested uh, be done uh, prior to the final plans or the Mylars being endorsed by the board. And he said that he would do those so I don't think we really need to go over that um, I don't I don't they're, they're just cleanup items <clears throat> in addition uh, Monday or yesterday I think uh, we, we finally put out the uh, June 8th dated June 8th today's date notice of decision approval of a definitive subdivision plan and special permit and I think the board has copies of that I believe that the only thing that um, 
was not included in that was the inclusionary housing component. Um, that and I dropped the ball on that. <laughs> the board, I didn't get a chance to work on it. So let me let me just jump in here so Real. everybody to have everybody relax. Um, so uh, there are going to be a couple of things that we're going to need to add to this, and so what's going to happen is um, we're going to need an extension of time because uh, tonight was the last night, uh, I think, for, for the meeting. And then um, it'll be basically, you know, revise the decision per these minor I items. I think we extended it to the 30th, if I'm not mistaken. June 30th? It was the 30th, June 30th. We, we usually do that. To the end of the quarter, yeah. June 30th. Yeah. Yeah. It was in a handwritten letter, but it wasn't stamped for the town clerk. Well, if it, as long as it's handwritten, so if June 30th was it, then we don't need an extension because we can. It's just a formality. Pick it up on the 22nd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just pick it up on the 22nd. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good clarification. So, anyway, that's the process we'll go through. We still got the to add that. So. so that component is missing, and I understand as of a, this morning or yesterday with a conversation um, that uh, I had with um, Heidi that the proponent uh, is asking that we also include in the decision a, a uh, waiver or that the board act on a waiver for the um, change in the turnaround from a circular to a Y type turnaround. Uh, I didn't think that was necessary because in the regulations uh, it talks about uh, the length of the road distance and where it's measured to, so it implies that the Y-type turnaround would be approved by the board. But on a closer reading of those regulations, if you look under court, uh, it's explicit that there is a, an explicit um, asterisk there that allows the board to waive the alternative circular turnaround for a T or Y shape. And then there is that second asterisk about the measurement of where the 500 foot is measured to. On the lane, you only have that second and you don't have the first. So I think to be that these guys are probably want to be sure that everything's covered, that the board, that it's appropriate for the board to consider that waiver and, and to add it to this. What's that document called? This was the waiver for the public act. When was that? February 4th, that 2016. Was back in February. Okay. And I know we talked about it, and then we said that we weren't, you weren't going to act on that because of the okay. uh, decision by the chief. You can have that. All right. So, so, so that needs to be acted upon by the board, and then. I can add that back into this decision. So that's the 11th waiver, this one? The 10th, I believe. The 10th? Yeah. We already had 10. Uh, uh, I yeah, think I there was only 9. There's 9 on it? I thought it was 10. No, it says That's what we had 10. I thought it was 10 on the plan. Uh, we, had, we had 10 originally, but we, yeah. we okay. had okay. put that one in, so it was down to 9 on, on this. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that would be it's, 10. It's gone back and forth, <coughs> 9 to 10. Okay. So we need a okay. motion and a vote on it? Um, uh, not yet. OK. Um, anything else? That's it. OK. So I think those are items that we're going to need to add to this list that we're going to compile. So I think what I'd like to do is go around to the board members and see what other items, if any, they have at this point in time to, uh, to talk about add in terms of the decision draft. I know everybody's getting this, uh, you know, for the first time today, tonight, yesterday, whatever. So it's a challenge that way. But um, with that, uh, Tilly, is there anything you wanted to? Uh, well, I, I, uh, not. I haven't reviewed that one, like you said. But okay. But I had difficulty reading the plan where your numbers are where you changed it, and I just wondered how, you know, what they were. I mean, where you got the the why. And right there where you, there was one parking, it's like, <laughs> I was guessing, what does this have, what are these numbers? The pavement is 28 feet wide. 
coming up the, the roadway at 20 feet wide. But that's not that's a change. That was in your first plan. No, that. it wasn't 28 feet wide. Well, I, I pulled out the previous plan and I pulled out the last one. And, and the only, I couldn't really figure out what was the difference. Tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is the old one, but compare it to the new so one, and I told me what the difference is, because I couldn't read the numbers. So we have, we've got your grading plan, that's Okay, six is the, is the uh, roadway profile plan. Um, See, I circled it. I, did you read those numbers? So this is a, well, okay, so that's a radius of 30 feet. Um, what plan, what of your original submission, Dennis, your drawings dated 426, going back a little bit, which drawing has the radiuses back here and the width, if any? I, I, again, I, I didn't bring those with me and I couldn't okay. off the top of my head, but I believe they're 20 feet wide as the road comes up there. I can throw a scale on it if you want. Well, I, I can tell by the scale that that is what they, it is. It's 20 feet wide. Um, but I just wanted to see if you had it written down somewhere because that would. I can't remember, but yeah, should be there. That's one of the little details that I asked that they make on these plans is to clarify yeah. that it is a 20 foot width okay. un, until they get up to the top and then it's 28 feet up there. So what I, what I can share with you is that this road is the same as it's always been. It's 20 right. feet wide and right. here's the bar scale. See that little right there, 20 feet? And, yeah. And then you can either trust me or I can go home and get a scale. Oh. <laughs> we got one here too. Yeah. Listen, please. Okay. <laughs> you can the plan. And then this is what they have here. It's the same. This is the same. This is the same. The That's plan the that he's got up there now, yeah. I'll, I'll show you the difference. All right. That's thanks. 20 feet. I appreciate that. <laughs> six, three, six. Okay. See how wide the thing is now? Right. It's this wide. This is the same. Right. 20 foot. Right. This is what's changed. This is how right. much thicker it is now. This so is you, much wider is this it is. the number I would have read? No, that's a contour. Oh, okay. It's not that's, labeled. That's, so oh. it's a reading of the plan is, issue. 28 foot is the uh, dimension. See, they did add it here now, yeah. okay. which they didn't have before. I so, there, so now that's 28, and that's where the difference is. And then the driveway is also that much wider coming in. It comes up to 20 feet wide so right up near okay. to turn around. I thought wide. it was this because it yeah. looked like you had retyped it over or something. Yeah. Three, one, something. That's the, that's the end of the, the length of the road. Uh -huh. So it did get typed over, but that's the overall length of the road. The station, the last station of the road. The, the, the 300, and, 300, 3 plus 55 or whatever, whatever it was there. That's the, the length of the road. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else at this point? No, that's all I would okay. say. What I would ask of you is that since we're going to try to have it be a formality when they come back to get the decision approved, recognizing you have just got this and you haven't had a chance to read this, mm -hmm. would you please, after you've read this, if you have any additional revisions or modifications that you want, Get them to Heidi. Um, at, get them to Heidi at least a week, like like the beginning of the next week. Because what's going to have to happen then is she's going to have to make sure they're okay with him and how are we going to do with us. Yeah. We're going to have to have a discussion just to make sure they're they're okay with the incorporated oh. or not. Hopefully, you're going to read it and it's going to be okay. All right. So, um, Robert. Anything on your end, sir? No, I just want to make sure, since there are a lot of little uh, small pieces, I want to make sure you have time for all of it. Yeah, I, yeah there are. That's great. <laughs> I, don't have any, I don't have any questions. But, yeah. 
Um, this is a question for Heidi. Uh, you sent a memorandum, and I think yes. you sent it by email. In the, in the package, I only have one page of this. It's only one page oh, okay. for right now. Yeah, I just, I just, yep, I just looked at the decision and made some initial comments. Perfect. Um, well, there are a couple other things. I just wanted to let Matt know that I moved those things around a little bit. If you I look at that. okay, mm -hmm. and also Dennis, I think that on your plan, the waivers were granted. You have May twelfth, but I think it was May eleventh. Okay. okay. And on the sheet one. Yep. Yeah. Check that. Okay. Because that was the last. That was planning board meeting. The twelfth was not the meeting, so they approved it on the eleventh. So sheet number one. What is it? Sheet number one, uh, waivers granted May 12th. I believe that should read May 11th. Matt, anything else? No. All right. Um, so let me I think the next, next thing I might have for a question is when you do the affordable fraction requirement, she, you would need the average market of the houses sold. Did you come up with a number? Yeah, we anticipate uh, marketing the homes in there between 600 and 650. 650, four bedroom home? Um, one of the things we can write into the, um, the decision to resolve that, we, we just went through this internally, um, is that the payment we made after X number of units be sold, and I would recommend in this particular sense where there's three units, that we have the payment be made after the second unit is sold. Yeah. So that we know what the average housing price is, so that we don't have to come back to them and say, you owe us more money. Right. Um, by that point, where I think we're going to have a pretty good yeah. indication as to what the um, what the value is, but it also gives us a little leverage in making sure that the, the payment is made and that that third lot wouldn't be released until the payment is made. Right. Because the, so the other development is at it. So they're selling for 850 So <laughs> when we get to that part in the conditions, Matt, um, where it's the inclusionary housing component, I have in big letters M-A-T-T. <laughs> no, so you're not getting out of it. <laughs> what you were just saying, you'll take care of dressing up and getting us better. In basically, uh, Heidi's language is, is, is a, a great start. We'll just make that provision about the payment uh, due after the second. I would recommend after the second lot is released. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm good with what you have. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, was there anything else on your end? Okay. So Rob, back to me again. Yep. Since I have the decision, it's in my computer. Yep. This is going to come back to me to complete that section, or um, do I send it to I have it, it on my computer. What's you the, want to do it? Okay. Yeah, that would okay. be great if Michael okay. sent it to That'll you. That'll probably, right. at this point, I think, I guess that makes sense. That's the easiest. It would be. And I'll just shoot you an email with it. Are you okay yes. with that, Larry? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just, right. as long yeah, as I have. Okay. Yeah. I have another um, question here, Rob. Um, okay. uh, if you didn't correct it from the other one, you had like, uh, during the something about during the peak hours for construction, but you didn't say when were the peak hours, so it was kind of blank, you know. That was one question I had. Can you, can you, can you point to because we need this? That was the old one. See, I, I don't know what the new one is. Uh, I don't think there was any change. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we should I, say when. I believe that was about the requirement for them to have a police detail. That's right. Uh, and the way that is written. Hours of operation during construction, yeah. condition 5F, page, page 12. Okay. And I think it's F. Yep, page 12. Yeah, 5. Yep. All right. Hours of operation, 7 to 6. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And so, do we put it to. Uh, I think it's kind of understood, peak hours, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 7 to seven to 9, 4 to 6. I mean, those are peak, peak hours. Hmm. I, I don't think it's uh, particularly. Georgetown, the peak hours is starting at school time, 2 or 3.30 or 3 o'clock to 5 or 6 well, in the morning. Well, this is just a caution or a suggestion to them that they need to schedule around those peak hours, and if unable, they need the police details. So if we tie them down to peak hour, and we've still got traffic, uh, you know. It would be coming in rather than going out. It's yeah. not a problem going out. Could I make a suggestion on this? Uh, 
developer to schedule police details at his expense if requested by the uh, chief of police. Mm -hmm. That way, it could be any time of day, and then the, the yeah. police would be the one that would, uh, the, the ones that are most uh, knowledgeable about yeah, the issue. Yeah, they're monitoring out there. So it says just, developers. Just a quick question: We're on such a small scale as compared to uh, Lisa Lane. Uh, yeah. we, we're not going to be developing or uh, uh, generating any more. Yeah, but you're right down in the heart of the, uh, the town. You're right. Lisa Lane is up. Well, I think it, but it, everything comes critical. in that same intersection. Is all I'm is all I'm thinking. I can't imagine that we're going to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. If we're if we're doing anything in the intersection that requires yeah. a police detail, we're happy to do that. Yeah. I can't see just <clears throat> excuse me by home the three home construction. Uh, we're going to be generating any yeah. type. Well, of it is a, a critical corner as far right. as I'm concerned. You know, Perfect. you've been very cooperative, in my opinion, about that yeah. issue. And, and, you know, if, if thank goodness you are, because I would want a, a traffic consultant there, because I, I've lived in this town many years, and that's a tough one. Sure. Would, would you be satisfied with that additional language, if, if required by the, it, it, as requested by the chief of police? Yeah, well, I think that, that would be good, if, if, as long as he's aware of it, you know. Yeah, that's, that's Give him a note that says, we're making this a condition to keep your eye on this. Matt, so where would you plug that in? If unavoidable, developer shall schedule police details at his expense uh, as yeah, as requested, that. if as and when requested by the chief of police. If as and when, as and when you, Mr. Lawyer, you requested by the chief of police. Uh, chief of police. Great. That's good. Yeah, that's uh, the other question I had is about the earth removal. You, you never mentioned if there's going to be any earth being removed, and that I know they they had some good soils up there. Yeah, there is a sort of a uh, the very end of this. That's an exception. Yeah, there's there's that exception. Yeah. So so you're not granting them permission under this approval to uh, remove or import or export any earth. So we're not giving them. Why isn't it? Doesn't it say that instead of the exemption of it? You're saying so, the exemption of the law, which is already chapter what is it, forty nine? Mm hmm. You're exempt from following that that requirement. No, I, I think what it was meant to say is that. Can you point to where you are, Larry? Uh, page fifteen or seventeen down near the bottom. Number three. Yeah. Okay. No permit was either uh, applied for, reviewed, or approved by this approval for earth removal and importation. Well, so if they if they have to do any, they have to come back for that's all and file permits. If they remove anything, yeah. you have to come back. Well, I have trouble understanding that. Is that a typical? Stumps would have to be removed in yeah. some excess material during construction. But not, I understand not, that. And that's allowed. That's yeah. allowed. But oh, there's yeah. some yeah. good soils there, and I would hate to see you no. strip the land no, no, and didn't no, just put, put back three inches. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know right off the top of my head under Chapter 49 if there is a quantity or anything. Uh, that's mentioned in there. I don't know. I could call check that. I didn't, I didn't bring that book, the code book. But this came from the turning leaf decision, mm -hmm. and that was in the turning leaf decision. And I don't know right. if they came back and asked for any earth removal well, or we not. We walked that. We know there wasn't any <laughs> soils back there. Yeah. yeah. That was tough land over there. A lot of gravel. Larry, what if what if no permit for Chapter 49 of the Movement Code is reviewed or approved uh, or special permit application or is considered in this notice of decision? Um, something to the effect of adding on the end, if, uh, if said permit is required, the applicant needs to apply for it. I mean, I, I know it's implied in that, but I'm just mm -hmm. trying to. Yeah. So what it's saying is that if they do, then they do have to still get the permit because they haven't said they're going to be doing anything that would require the permit. So we can't require that they get a permit for something they're not requesting. And that if they find out they do need to do that, then they're going to be required to get the permit. And if they don't, then they violate the order uh, notice of decision. Right. 
you know, as, as I re, I can, I'll go by memory, but that bylaw, as far as I know, is X amount of, of uh, soil re being removed, then you needed a permit. I'm talking about uh, any any topsoil that's going to leave there. I can't we put that in a condition where yeah. that's so you're about about any topsoil whatsoever. Yeah, I I don't. They can do what they what do you better put it this excess. way. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's excess material uh, because of cuts and fills. I don't we mind. Have some place yeah. to put it. We don't really anticipate. Um, any type of pit operation. I don't think there's that much material out there. If there's loom out there, it generally stays on site yeah. uh, to back up shoulders and you know landscape lots and whatnot. You haven't um, come across any alleged know. back there. No, not at all. See, no. see all turning leaf was a whole different thing. They had a blast yeah. and everything. No. But I just, I just thought yeah. that we ought to keep. There may that be some well. extra material that comes out in order to. Put get the road in the grade that we needed to do, and that's one of the reasons why we, we needed to have a waiver, so we didn't excavate a whole cavern in there. Mm. So we had to have a waiver to, but there is still some material that had to come out in order to put in good gravel for the road. So right. there has to well, be the some. The, the, the topsoil, you know, the stumps would have to be removed, stumps and brush, and the topsoil that's that's there typically is left on a pile on site and screened and uh -huh. utilized on the sites to right. make sure that they have a good good topsoil for I growing grass. I have no objection. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah. If that you know, I just don't want it to be off site. Yeah. Again and again, it's not it's not a, a project with such scale that would generate thousands of yards of materials yeah. that come out of there. It's a very different project. Sure hmm. it is. Um, so then I'm not going to edit number three. Anything else to add? No, um, so then for myself. Oh, he's very so Can sorry. I just ask a stupid question here? <laughs> the, the chapter 49 <laughs> reference. I say the same thing. You yeah. Is the chapter 49 reference, is that Mass General Laws chapter 49? Or are no. you looking at a, a specific code? Town, it's a town, town code. code. There's a town code with just the town bylaw. It's bylaws. a general bylaw, I think. Town general bylaw. I don't often see the reference like this with just chapter 49. Is no, that, we haven't used it that often. Is that? Should it be expanded upon? Well, I, I don't know. I, I guess that I'm sitting here searching the general laws thinking that that's what the, because that's how I normally see what I'm, when it's referencing chapter 49, it's usually a, well, so. I think it, it makes sense to be explicit to say it's yeah. bylaw section, bylaws. you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, of the Georgetown. So when you when you look on the computer, you'll see it uh, yeah. listed as number forty nine, yeah. and it'll show when you get into that. Yeah, if that's the proper reference, I don't have a problem with it. I'll just yeah, well, I'll read it, reread it, re -read it again because you did bring out some okay. questions. I should have brought it. I'm sorry. The other the other okay. thing I had that on two B uh, about the private public road. Um, you wrote something about if it becomes what page you want? Okay. to be uh, the old listing of um, the first section of it. Page six? Six or seven page six? six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, page six. You, uh, what was there was something about, um, <coughs> I thought instead of if, you're definitely going to do a uh, Public road, right? We all we agree are, to that. I think that. Okay. So I think that word. If the planning board or the highway department says we're right. not going to recommend it, it you know, we intend on building it to town specs and getting it accepted as a public road. Right. And it's so, so I it's, think it's a, instead of if it should be when. Well, no, it. it that was I my, think I think they, it does. Maybe this is different from what you read in the older one, but what it says now is the planning board expects Palmer Lane to become a public lane. Okay. All right. Yeah, you almost could put a period there, but they didn't um, become a public lane. Okay. If street acceptance is completed. If it, that's it. That's, when? But that's if street acceptance. Street acceptance may never happen. Well, we want it to happen, and we were all agreed that it's going to happen. So I thought when should be there. When it's accepted, then it's going to be. Uh, if you put when public. in there, I don't think there's any need for that entire paragraph. The whole paragraph you want out. I think the, I think the word if is is generating future action. Well, well, I think I think the intent of this, on, as my part of it, was that it would come back before the planning board as a minor modification, 
and not have to go all the way back through the definitive plan process. Because if it's not accepted, and, and the board is not the only board, this board is not the only board that, that says the street is going to be accepted. It has to go through your selectmen and the highway department. And it, yeah, it has to go to town meeting right. as well. But um, So that's what you have no control over? Yeah, but I, the way it, it gave me the impression, the way it's written, that if, in fact, they decide not to do it, and then we have a, a public, a private road there, and we don't have the documents in place for the covenants and whatnot, uh, it sounded like it didn't seem as, as secure. Would, as if, would you be satisfied if we changed if to if, as, and when? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all. So if, as, and when, street acceptance is complete. Okay. Yeah. All right. It takes care of that concern, I think, because then if it... Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so this is part of the list, Heidi, that I've got. And yeah. Just so there's adding um, the waiver to the decision of the cul-de-sac. Yep. Right. So that takes care of that. Um, you have to vote on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, don't we? Don't we? It. So my understanding is that the only thing that really has teeth in it are the waivers that are listed in the notice of decision that we vote on. And that really, all we're doing is theoretically a straw vote saying, yes, we support the waiver for the project. That's, that's, that's so true. we don't really need to do that right now. If it's in the decisions and we vote on the decisions, then it's... Well, that, that's fine. That's, yeah. as as okay. that's accepted. You know? okay. yep. yep. I just didn't want to well, go on that and say, oh... That, that's didn't you on the 11th vote them one at a time? We did. So uh, I think to be consistent, you should vote this one okay. to be added. I it think doesn't hurt. It and if you hurt. want to change that on another project, to it lump them hurt. together. Okay, can't hurt. So, um, with that said, so we can knock that one off. Um, <coughs> request probably. I'm going to give this to somebody to make a motion. Basically, can't have to wait for some division regulation process. It's in the top sense here. Well, I've got to kind of edit it out. It's basically a waiver from the cul de sac. That's what we're granting them to do the why. On, I, by reference to the subdivision um, regulation yeah. number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move uh, that we grant a waiver uh, to the applicant from the. Um, Subdivision Regulation 365-38C, cul-de-sac diameter. In order to allow... I didn't explain it? Yeah. In, in order to allow them to uh, build the... Uh, the Y. The Y uh, in accordance to with the uh, fire department's yeah. requirements. Okay. Second. Okay, motion has been made and it's been seconded to... Provide a grant a waiver from subdivision regulation 365-38C cul-de-sac diameter in order to allow design of Y as approved by the fire chief uh, as per plans. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 One abstain. Um, so then um, I don't see in the notice of decision a list of the drawings. Um, so we want to add that right above. all the way in the back, I think. Is uh, it? Yeah. Okay. It, it, Great. it Great. Um, near the back somewhere. Page 16. 14, 15. You know what's funny, Larry? I don't have 16. Well, it is funny. <laughs> well, as long as they're there. It, it just says uh, that you're incorporated into this decision by reference. Plans entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan, Palmer Lane. February 2016, revised through May 25th, 2016. Good. So don't change that revision date, even though you're going to make a couple changes on these plans. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yep. All right, so that takes care of that. And I'll just add the waiver to that list of waivers then? Well, you better put it in granted June 8th, because the others say we're going to say June 11th. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just won't change the revision date. Correct. Okay. Oh, well. 
Oh, I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if he just puts a note in parentheses beside the waiver that he adds to that list? We can change the the Does decision to June yeah. 8th. Yeah, but we haven't voted on it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Change, change the to all sheets to June 8th then. June 8th. Yeah. Okay. So the next item that I had that I just wanted to go over was uh, sheet number one. The date is May 11th, not May 12th. Yeah. That was a change. Um, you got the inclusionary housing component? Yeah. And a couple. Uh, those are dates of public hearings. Okay. This is yeah, just a question okay. on my part, clarification. Um, so the street acceptance at a later date by the highway department or the planning board, is it an or or is it an and? In that should be and, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got that change? Right? Yes. Okay. Um, on E, and what I'll do, Heidi, is I'll just rip this out and give this to you. You don't have to take these notes down. But okay. on E, developer, developer to provide street trees as depicted and specified on the approved plans. Is there anywhere on the plans that talks about a one-year guarantee? Because if there isn't, I'm going to add it in the decision. I'm not sure. I know in the I didn't in see the, it. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I know that we talked about to preserve I mean, yeah. life, I mean, but I don't know if there was a time frame on that. Okay, so and it has to be that, anyways on for approval. The trees are going to be checked when the right. road gets by the road, road gets acceptance. That yep. the trees have to be living at that point in time. Yeah. So obviously they. So I just want to. I'm going to spell that out a little bit better then. So what what I'll give you Heidi is it, it, is, is it would say and if the board wants to talk about it, we can talk about it. Developer to provide street trees as depicted and specified on the approved plans. That's what's written right now in the decision. And what I'm plugging in is street trees and evergreen trees shall be guaranteed for one full year after planting. Any tree that is sick, dead, or dying shall be replaced immediately as directed by town planner or subdivision review inspector. And then it goes on with the rest. Okay, that's just a mechanism so that they have a time schedule when they have to do a buy and move using calls to shop. Um, one way of doing it. <laughs> Whatever works. Developer <coughs> shall install, so if you go to J on 7 of 17, <coughs> developer shall install one street light near the end of Palmer Lane as shown on the approved plan. And unfortunately, right now, what we need to add, or per Georgetown Light Department, um, because the Georgetown Light Department's requirements are not going to allow you to do the light that you're looking for. Um, so I want to keep in what you guys have on the plans that we're striving for, um, but we would add to after approved plan or per, or per Georgetown Light Department. And then that was something that we'll talk about later. A uh, question just for myself on page 8 of 17. Did we, as a board, I don't, did we vote to go through that process, Larry, where these individual lots are? I don't know if you did. I don't recall. Does anybody recall? If what, 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 what's your question? Well, page 8 of 17, page 9 of 17, that's that process that we have the ability to do where um, the applicant is required to produce a certain level of drawings for each lot to ensure that they're going to be done um, in consistent with the larger plan of the subdivision. And it, you know, it's a series of things <coughs> that they do. Larry reviews them at a certain technical level that this scale doesn't allow you to do. And when I saw all this, I don't remember talking about it. And it seemed like a lot to do on this particular piece of land, um, particularly not just that there are only you know, the four lots, the three lots, but there's not a lot going on on it. I would probably just be copying so, this and making it on a well, sheet at maybe a 20 scale. So you haven't read this yet. 
Yeah. Well, we looked we've, at we've, it. I've, we've kind of scanned it over. I did have some questions regarding that. So yeah. I'm going to probably, maybe you'll recall, and part of this discussion was that there are a lot of proposed drainage improvements on each of these lots. Oh. Along the driveways, the the trench, the uh, infiltration trenches along the driveways and behind the houses. Right. And that was one of the primary That's reasons for having something like this in there. That's what it was. So we have no intention of changing okay. that. So whatever, when the lots get developed, they're going to be developed according to what we've got approved from the planning board. And typically, can you, can you help us understand what you would be getting in this information that would be more than that information? I'm, I'm going to be getting basically the same thing yep. <coughs> for the plan. And then I'm going to be, or Fargo, whoever's doing the inspection, is going to be looking at it in the field. <laughs> to see that it gets done because it is part of the overall uh, drainage design and then there's going to be an as-built plan put on record that it actually did get built out. Okay, and the reason being is that so much of this subtle stormwater management is being taken care of by this drainage. On approach. individual lots. Individual lots. Yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I, I really don't understand how, how, how much work is involved in that. Maybe help us with that because if the plans are pretty much like this and it will be submitted for each lot, I think similar what it to is, this, how much work is involved in looking at this plan versus an individual lot to say, yep, that's exactly what we got. I, I doubt, like, Dennis, very seriously that you're going to build exactly those same rectangular boxes. I doubt very seriously they're going to be located in exactly those places with the exact grading that you're showing. Maybe the driveways are going to change, you know, and the infiltration trenches along the driveways and behind the houses are going to change. So that is what's going to happen. That's really what's going to happen. I, I, and I do These are generic, and I, you know, I, situations. I, 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 um, I didn't recall that, but after you mentioned I do recall that discussion. Um, um, uh, I guess how much, Larry, maybe you can help me with this. How much time would it take you to read? Do you have to go to the site to look at the bare lot? Yeah, I mean, I've outlined, you know, what's required and uh, what the review fees that uh, are that are involved with that, and and the the re-reviews if necessary, the on-site stuff and the as-built. So review. that's what number eight is. That's what eight would be. So mm. reviewing that plan is six hundred and twenty-five dollars per lot. Correct. And that's just to look at the plan. Uh, to see if it fulfills the intent of this. Correct. With your real house and your real grading and your real driveway. Mm. Which 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 will be a, a bit different than what's on the plan. Because if it's not, it's not going to be a very pretty development. And I'm not saying <laughs> You know, with your rectangular I'm house. You know. well, no, no, much, we generally do us the main blocking and attachment. That's yeah. what we anticipate doing yeah. in there. On, you know, we, we don't expect to do... Um, very large houses in there, you know. We're kind of focusing in on a particular market. So realistically, I think our envelopes or our actual footprints will fit within those rectangular boxes. So they might actually, you know, have a jog here or there, but they might be a tad smaller. Um, I'm just, that part of what's going through my mind also is it, <coughs> it looks like um, there's a requirement before I get my building permit, I'm sure there's a requirement for, and again, um, bear with me, I uh, I haven't read through it verbatim just yet, uh, or every word. Um, I sign off to get my occupancy permit, um, probably s several inspections. Is, is, it, it, it seems, you know, so picking up on that, is there a way, Larry, to basically verify that they have built you know, that level of detail that you're interested in. Just once. They have, they haven't. If they haven't, they got to do it. They can't get X. They finish it. They get it done right. They get X. Versus, it seems like it seems like there's a lot of uh, approvals and, and, and I, I yeah, we, can time and... Th this is not something that's, that's new. It's been tried. I know. I know. Um, I know. Uh, it, isn't this for the protection of the home buyer? Chaplain, not Chaplain Hills, but uh, 
to do that, to do this. But yeah, no, 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 it, it, no. It, 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 it's good meaning. There's no question about it. Yeah. It's I just see, I, and don't get me wrong. I know that um, that if, if Larry needs to verify, you know, some of the the infiltration trenches or whatnot are built um, as per plan, that's fine. It almost seems like that can be handled within the subdivision inspection process, depending on the timing of the houses or. We can get other inspections to make sure that he's happy with the infiltration trenches or whatever the case may be. Um, but it does seem like, uh, you know, we, we do a site plan, we do a, uh, a septic design, it goes through the board, <coughs> it goes through the building inspector's office. It's just, it seems like it's adding a, a totally separate layer of the inspection process as well as the review process. Um, a $1,000 or so additional cost per lot. So I don't. Um, so I don't want to do something twice, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think what Larry is looking for, correct me if I'm wrong, is what the subdivision inspector is going to be reviewing. No. That, right. And I think but, that's... But, so the, the infiltration trenches, and Dennis, maybe you can answer this question for me. The infiltration trenches are tied into the drainage calcs for the subdivision. That's correct. So they have to go in, and, and that's generally part of... Um, most towns would include that as part of the building inspector's purview of reviewing the plan to uh, assure it's getting built according to the subdivision plan. And I understand that this board is, wants to have the building inspector. Is, but the building inspector is not qualified. And this, I don't mean. I mean, understand that, and I, that's what I'm, 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 I'm saying is that this town wants to rely on your town engineer to fulfill that. I guess my question is, is is the design is done and I can understand an inspection being done to to verify that it's built in in conjunction with the plan that's been approved. Um, and I'm not sure how much difference a plan that I have here versus something that is going to be built that's essentially within that same box is, is going to be different for I guess a six hundred and twenty-five dollar review. That's I guess that's what I'm trying to understand on behalf of the applicant. Yeah. To to have a plan that's drawn up that's basically like that, it's a building that's going to be within that that square, and show basically what's on there for a drainage, um, for six hundred and twenty-five dollar review. And I'm just looking out for the client here for. Do you want to respond to that? Then? Yeah, uh, build it just like it is. We won't have a problem. Build your house within that that's, box. That's Make your I'm, no, no, no. I'm serious. I'm Hear me out. If your grading is the same, and you're after you do your septic design, uh, and your driveway's in the same place, and the trenches are in the same place, and submit an as built to this board that you built, you know, within reason of that that design. I'm not saying if you change the, you know, the grade and in one corner the L or the contour is 26 and it ends up being 28. Yeah. But if you turn that house around on the lot, the house gets twice as wide. No question about the driveway that. comes in on the other side. I mean, this is real. This is real stuff here. You know, they're going to go back and they're going to develop each one of these lots. The, the the depiction of the homes on these lots and what Dennis has done as far as grading is what he anticipates doing. Um, he hasn't done any septic designs yet, and that's probably going to change the grading a little bit. Yeah. So could we make it a contingent clause that in the event that any of the following changes, then we have to go through this procedure, and if none of these things are changed, then they don't have to? Or well, it's a, little, it's, it's a little hard to define, you know, we'll the change. Up, yeah. And that's what this kind of protects. What, what and, this does and, the, and the initial plan that you can send to me is probably going to be exactly like your septic plan. That's going to, uh, it's not more work for Dennis to create a plan for me to look at mm -hmm. and to go to the field with. Once you get a house design, you know, once you have a buyer and you're going to build a, you know, a spec house or you're going to build a, you know, a, a house according to, you know, a client or a buyer. Is there a way that we can simplify it somehow, Larry? It, I, it just seems like it's it's a, it is a little cumbersome between you know um, before building permit, after uh, you know for occupancy, as bills that need to come to the planning board or whatever the case may be. Um, if we're concerned with the drainage, as long as we stay within a certain 
impermeable area that's shown on this plan, mm -hmm. and we use the same uh, volume infiltration trench. Is that a way to simplify it? That it you know doesn't jump through a, a, a review hoop and. Um, oh. I'll take another look through this, but if you can identify the areas where you think it can be streamlined, then I'll certainly I, do my best to do that I, for and, 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 I, and I really appreciate that dialogue because I, I think I think it's trying to balance. Yes. And um, um, I mean, I'm not trying to say anything against having oh, Larry review this. Right. right. It's yeah, just, no, no, I no, it's just the time frame it yeah. takes to review, which just seems which is like what an I expense. Was bringing that's, up. Yeah, yeah. That's, yep. and, and, and that's what this board is for, and this, this format is for us, but that's discussing things yeah. like this. And so that's and, all we're And doing. so just, uh, so let me say out loud what I think I'm hearing is that, in, so that we understand, so, you know, Larry is looking for just verification that um, this is done that way. That's fine. Sure. That's exactly so what we're looking for. So maybe we could work so it out. When you, maybe you guys can work that out yes. and get that language done and then if you guys are in agreement, I'm only speaking for myself as one board member, but if Larry says this is now good to go, then we're gonna, I'm going to say that's good enough for me. And I think that, so would, would that be one way? To, so could we agree? Yeah. To, oh, certainly. Yeah, okay. if you guys will point out, you know, uh, where we can improve on this, I'll be happy to, you know, take okay, that. Uh, that's fine. We'll discuss it, and we'll get back to Larry and yeah. see if we could kind of streamline so everything that, and so make sure the town's protected <clears throat> in that respect, and uh, it just doesn't create that would, a... That would be great, and quite frankly, if you guys can come up with something that Larry's in agreement with, it might be helpful also for us on other projects, too. Right. So, um... Uh, uh, for streamlining. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, it, without giving up what the intent is behind Absolutely. the ordinance. Exactly. And right. Okay. Um, so that's I don't okay. want any water running that's down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's K on page 7 that's going to yes. get reworked. Okay. All right, so that ball is in your guys' camps. Okay. And, and to, like everything else, to do it like yesterday yes. so that we can get it sooner. <laughs> um, so that took care of that. Um, unavoidable. And then if you go to F on page 12 of 17. Let me just say, if, if these guys can get something back to me by this Friday, maybe, or at least Monday, I'll get back to you within a couple of days of that so we'll, we can do this. Appreciate it, everybody. Um, so then F on page 12 of 17, the second to last sentence where it says, uh, if unavoidable developer to schedule police details at his expense, mm -hmm. adding to after expense, if as, if as and when required by chief of police. Yes. You had that one? I have that, okay. yes. Just a clarification question on page 14 of 17, number 10, A. Larry, when it, where it says, and as built plan and profile of the site, what does that mean, profile of the site? Is that a road profile? Yeah, yeah. Can you add to A, just a clarification for profile, for road profile? Sure. Okay. That was A, 10A, and page 14. Um, and then the last one was, uh, on page 15 and 17 of the exemptions, um, chapter 49, um, Heidi, yes. to elaborate what it really, that what it really means. section, what it means, chapter 49 means. Okay. Um, as, as we were just reviewing that, I just had one other quick question. Yeah. Uh, on page 6 of 17, uh, developer number F, a letter F, a developer shall extend the 10th Street sidewalk to Palmer Lane and up the left westerly side of Palmer Lane. Uh, just to specify, but as you said earlier today, that that's going to be shortened. Does this language need to be changed now? Where, where is it? Uh, uh, 6 of 17, 2F. Uh, that's already been changed just now on page 7. That's 300 right there. And I said to station okay. 2 plus 90 yeah. left, and there should be a space in there. Okay. He <laughs> picked, picked up a... Picked up something that we didn't know was in there. Uh, um, I think 
think uh, I think that's it. So you okay with that? Okay, so I think what we're going to do then is we're going to continue this. Is that what we're doing? Are we continuing this meeting to the 22nd, which is hopefully going to be a formality. So if I can get a, is that right, Larry? Did you did you vote on that last on that waiver? Yes, we did. Oh, you did. Okay. Did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. So, um, with that, if I can get a motion to continue this public hearing to the twenty seventh. Mr. Chairman, I move we continue the public hearing on uh, Palmer Lane to uh, June twenty second meeting at ten uh, fifteen. Second. Motion has been made and it's been seconded to continue the Palmer Lane uh, hearing to June 22nd at 7.15. Any discussion? No discussion, all in favor? Aye. One abstain, yep. unanimous. Um, all right, we're done, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you everyone. We're getting on. <laughs> one quick question, has nothing Please. to do with Palmer Lane. Um, I've got a client that's purchasing one of the Lisa Lane lots, and um, I know that you guys have probably been inundated with phone calls and, uh, and whatnot. Um, are they not looking for any other releases uh, until the 22nd, and will that have to come back to a meeting correct. before they can correct. actually purchase that, that lot? That's correct. Yeah. We haven't gotten any phone calls, just to be clear. Like, oh, you didn't? The second person that said that to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got hey. that one phone call. Wait, yeah. So yeah. Not. Okay. I'm assuming that. No, right. this yeah, no. one. I just have an email. I have an email and at the Affordable Housing Trust meeting tonight, um, they mentioned that they'll be signing the regulatory agreement with the Board of Selectmen. And the Affordable Housing Trust is going to send a memo encouraging the planning board to release slots. Very good. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Um, are we just about to text you now. <laughs> so before we go to, uh, there's no new business yes. planning office, no yeah. public reports. I see Alan in the audience, and I was curious what was on your mind. I would um, like to ask you a question as a citizen who doesn't understand your process here. What is it that uh, that is needed to um, move forward with this plan? It's been months now that we tried to get it in, and now we got it in recently. And there's some changes you want. Now tonight is no other meeting. What, can you help me advise me what I have to get? What, what has to be done? Well, I think um, what needs to be happen. What needs to happen is um, the, uh, the the application was never apparently was never um, received by the town clerk and recorded officially, and the application was never um, stamped, and so uh, it was not only incomplete as the changes that we talked about which I think when Larry spoke with the engineer, was trying to help, saying, you know, these are things that are needed. So it may, even though it may have been sitting there for a couple of months. Um, the town clerk refused to take it. Because to the plan, to the plan, to the, I personally, I thought my neighbor was going crazy. I went down there, absolutely, didn't have a fight, but it was, because I, but it was pretty damn close to that. But listen, you have to take it. If you won't take anything, you have to take it first. My life isn't going to end. I'm not going to lose $100,000 over this. This has been going on with swapping land. But, but the point, my point is, it's an A&R for 21 days. This has been going on forever. And I just want to know what has to be done. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I have one little thing I want to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a little bit silly. Do you, do you, do you, do you know not the answer to that, that it has well, to come from the planning board to the... That's the way it has been done. Um, my question is, is who is the owner of Map 12, Lot 25? Well, see, now we're, get, now we're getting into the application, though, and, now, and I don't really want to be doing that because it's not in front okay. of us right now. Um, so I, I guess to answer your question, then, without going backwards again, um, that is need, to, need, to, need to file that complete with all of the boxes checked and the correct information. So that's going back missing. to what I'm saying. What do I have to do to be complete? Has to come here to the well, planning board I think, I first. Think, I think the I think your engineer um, yeah. who's filing that A and R plan knows the answers to that. Would that mm. would that be a fair assessment? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to sit here. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say <coughs> do A B C because if I miss D, it's going to come back and bite me in the butt. Um, and well, I'm, I'm unofficially asking you. What it is I have to do with the damn thing? That's what I'm telling you. It's been going on for months. Well, I and think we just—it is not again. This isn't a big subdivision. This is a 
I think Two neighbors. I think I own that piece you're talking about. And I so I I, I think what I think what the answer is is maybe not as clear as you want it handed to you right now, but I think the answer is that your engineer has had a discussion with Larry and they know what the changes are that needs to be made to make it a complete application and formal, then it needs to be submitted to the planning department and the planning department kicks it over to the town clerk who stamps it and then we have that 21 day period from that stamp. So the check that we received from the plan we received before, that's thrown out. Oh, no, no, no. We, no, we the don't check, throw right? checks out. It never got deposited because the application would be denied. It's not complete. It's not. And I told the people that came in, and these people know that's why Larry Graham got involved. So if you need to submit a complete application with a check, then it goes down to the town clerk, it gets stamped, and then it goes into the planning board. Okay. And none of that's been done, so I don't know where this is. No, but you know it's been going on for two and a, over two and a half know, months I know, now. I, know. I mean, you know that. We've been in that office before. So, but that's why Larry got involved, because the engineer needs to get paperwork to the board. So I, I, I think, you know, I think, um, yeah, so I think that's, that's, okay. that's probably. Um, then I, okay, so I don't really have an answer, but thank you. I do have a, a, a thing I'd like, would like to ask you about this. Um, there was a request that we put on a non-buildable lot statement on those things. I feel that clouds the title, and I don't think the town has the right to ask us to do that. I mean, it, it, the zoning dictates what's there and what isn't. For us to put the cloud of title by putting non-buildable lot on something, that's no, done that. That's no, no, it, 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 the phrase is not a, not a, not a, not a buildable lot, but not a building lot. There's a difference. You're not creating a separate building lot, but that's not saying that it's not buildable. I don't disagree with you. We're not creating it. I, I mean, I agree with you. We're not creating but, but the way it was worded, it sounds like it's not buildable. I see that coming back sometime. Well, the, they're dead and gone. The kids are selling it. Haunts, haunts the, the word, the, the wording should not be not buildable. The wording should be not, not a building. building lot. Was that a conversation that you had with the Yes. Team? So, yep. again, the engineer who's putting the plans okay, so together a building does lot. understand that. That's, that's his job. I just wanted to ask that one because I said I refused to sign that. Yeah, that I, I don't blame you. I don't no. blame you. <laughs> Thank you. Please, please, please keep that recording. Okay. But, but your name, uh, if I remember, was so not on the application at all. No, it was no. on. It was the. What was the other name? Uh, Andrew Yeah. Yeah. So your name wasn't there at all. I mean, they were, that was just one of the many items that were. You know, it wasn't all signed by all the parties involved. And so I, 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 I realize it. It sounds like there was some things that had to be corrected on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But it will come again. So. And, and so you haven't received you haven't received any plans. No. We in fact I believe no. we. No. There was never an application <coughs> stamped down with the town clerk. Nothing's not, and, so, and not a re resubmission either, right? There hasn't no. been. No. It was two weeks ago. No. Tonight, no. two weeks ago right. that um, your engineer was contacted and knew of what needed okay. to happen. Exactly. Well, you, now you finally answered. We did a lot of talking. You answered me. You haven't even had it. A recent middle or no. that's really that's really the answer. So go kind of well along when you get around to it. Okay. <coughs> I think that's I, close okay. Yeah, yeah. I okay. do. Um, can I just ask for clarification on one thing? So um, maybe you should have a copy of this, but I'm just I'm a little confused. So I pulled up the information on Map 12 Lot 25 says the property was deeded to Pamela Simpson on March 19, 2015. Map 12 Lot 25. Oh, yeah, really? I don't know if you want a copy. That's a, that was another piano Simpsons. There's another piece of rock after that. There was a mistake in the in the, in the wording. It's not supposed to be. I, I don't believe that that lot was supposed to be combined with 25. I believe. So I just I just wanted to see who the owner is and yeah, who yeah, the yeah, owner's yeah, authorization okay, is. If that was on, I don't I haven't read the thing. But <laughs> if that's if that's what's on. Do you want to keep this? Sure. You're Pamela Simpson is Pamela. Simpson. They bought a they bought a lot. It was a farmhouse, and then there was the acreage. We so kept the acreage attached so that's, to our farm, and, and they, they sold Pamela Simpson bought the farm. So that's you know that's an example of what part of what needs to be cleaned up on the application that gets resubmitted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I, uh, all right. My, my neighbor's one of those people. He would say, "Here, this is one of those." No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Parcel Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. So we want to go to member of public job, report. Yeah. Any other concern of a public board member or member of the public? Um, oh, here, I'm, I'm guessing now. Planning board. 
Okay. First of all, number one, does anybody have any other concerns other than what's on the agenda? Okay. If not, uh, two and three are really one and the same. And um, this is this cabaret, cabaret. What's this? Oh, that's just what I gave him. Just so you guys have a copy. That's the email that I returned the call today. And send it. You're going to pass it. There's one for everyone. Is there enough? Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Mr. Um, Chairman, do you need me to say for the rest of this meeting? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Lucky dog, you. <laughs> Thanks, well, man. you skipped the first half. <laughs> <laughs> you get to skip the second. Um, so planning board protocols and planning board policy manual two and three, they're, they're really one and the same. Um, so here's what I'd like to do about Call that for tonight. Thank you, Larry. Um, so I understand um, that Tilly has some items that she's drafted to add to this list that I had started, which was just a place to start. Um, what I'd like to do is take what Tilly's got. Cut and paste from That's other good. communities. Okay, so, um, so this is, sorry. Okay. Um, so there's only two things that I would like to accomplish with regards to, I'm going to call item number two and three, I'm going to call it item 23. Um, is one, to see if the board would be willing to vote on one item, which is to use Robert's rules as a guideline for our decisions when we make our policy. And the reason I worded it that way was because after spending some more time with it, it can be as complicated as you want it to be Robert's rules. It can be as simple as you want it to be Robert's rules. And a parliamentarian could take Robert's rules and really um, wreak havoc with a board that turns over on a regular basis. So with that in mind, what I'm thinking of is that the board, it, we can craft our own policy, our manual, our procedures in a very common language that we understand. And when we're coming to make a decision about a particular policy to vote on, we just make sure it is consistent with Robert's rules as we interpret them. And then we're going to end up with our policy manual versus Robert's rules. That's why I'm wording it the way I am. What do you think about that, Matt? There's a lot of words in there that make me very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Using Robert's rules as a guideline, well, what? So it's either or. Not. Either we have a policy and procedure, which doesn't have to be Robert's rules. If you, if, if you want to say, let's go through Robert's rules and say, we're going to adopt 1 through 6 and reject 12 through 9, 12 through 19, fine. But to say it's going to be a guideline, I don't know what that means, I guess, is my, is my concern. Okay. Yeah, I wrote that, too, as a guideline. Okay. Um, I found that written. It's on the second page, the top. Uh, in, in the way they way I found it phrased uh, in another town, it was uh, in procedural matters. Do you have that? On oh, so, um, what you hit it up? Yeah. That's how they phrased that one. Uh, I'm just hmm. In procedural matters not covered by these rules. Shall be guided. By law. Hmm. And they Shall use the guided word as, as well. As revised. Yeah. Um, this is the concern that, that I've that I brought up when we initially talked about it, that Robert's rules is immense. There are, are slices and dices, and um, the reason why it's immense is to handle contingencies. Yeah. There are going to be contingencies. Right. Um, I think that we, that we have to rely on each other's integrity to not go nuts with it. Um, the... Um, the idea of drawing principles from it or drawing a context from it, I think is a very good idea. Um, perhaps if there were some mechanism where uh, the rules can be suspended. But now here we're talking, you sound like United States Senate, <laughs> you know, which is what we don't want to do. Which is what, yeah. what we don't want to do, but, but it's a path that we. But we could do the opposite and, and, and indicate that it's 
suspended, it, it, but it, either but anybody could say, hey, this is this meeting is out of control. I, Mr. Chairman, you could say the meeting is out of control. We're going to implement nine 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 thirty. We're going to re-implement Robert's <laughs> rules because this meeting is out of control. Something like that. <laughs> because I think I, I think. For, for myself, I think 85% of our meetings run smoothly and we don't have any issues and nobody I think could, could cause, have any criticism with how 85% of our meetings are run. Mm. I think it's the 15% that we, we, we're here and we're, we're bickering among ourselves and people are interrupting each other that all of a sudden we need to say, and it, it, and it shouldn't just be Rob saying this is getting out of control, it should be We've got to go back to what we've agreed to do because it's we're, right now it's not going that way. Well, what if we, um, what if we say okay, let's take let's put Robert rules on hold for a second, and let's just establish a baseline of some rules to address the fifteen percent. Let's see where this goes. And with that, if everybody is in agreement with that, take what Tilly's written. Take what I've written, um, <laughs> you guys add to it, don't add to it. And I think this is worth a meeting in and of itself. <coughs> what do you guys think about that? Oh, definitely, because there's there's things in that. I tried to read, Christopher, probably an old book of Robert's Rules, revised though, it said. And it was interesting to me where, where the chairman doesn't have to vote. And our chairman always votes, but he can he abstains. It's the it's the members who the rest of the members who vote. He only votes if there's a tie. Then he votes. And I thought, geez, I wonder why that was. And see, I can see getting into them just getting so hung up on Robert's rules, which is why <laughs> I did start to shy away from it. That, that you know we could start be debating. Well, that I know the CONCOM does so, that, though. I noticed the chairman there abstains almost every meeting. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I watched it on TV. I, 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 it's probably been 15 years since I read Rob's Rules. But I seem to remember, and I think this was in the foreword to it, and basically it said, these are rules for when things get contentious, when it gets a little, I'm paraphrasing, when it gets rowdy. Right. But basically, if you have a group of people that are all working together and trying to resolve something, you don't need these rules. It makes sense to me. I mean, just and to I, and I, th I think we're not the center. Yeah, just to, to address that fifteen percent, the tails. You know, yeah. it's well, first not, of all, do people agree with me about that? I mean, is that <laughs> no, a, yeah, absolutely. Is, is a, I think I don't, what I'm questioning though is, do we want to do anything about that fifteen percent? Because sometimes there's productive. Discussion that takes, and we don't want to suppress productive conversation. We don't. Here, here's one. Of, here's one of my. Here's. Here's now. I'm just talking for just myself. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see applications be approved in two, no more than three, meetings. Generally speaking, now there's always going to be an exception, but this idea that applications come to us and end up going four, five, six meetings is. Um, is a it just reinforces the planning board as an obstacle to things happening in town but B it's not necessary it's a it's a real inefficient use of our time at the way we're doing it when meetings go <coughs> that long part of it is how we deal with the applicant and their applications but that's another story so I'm looking to establish rules that are going to say um, See, I haven't thought this one out yet. I was, I didn't. But you're talking about that. process rather than the content. I'm talking right? in that regard, process. But that means that people are going to have to do things in a certain way, which, and by a certain time. You know, you can't be coming in on the fourth meeting with new information that no one has heard before. You know, and there's always exceptions to the rule. I get that, but generally speaking. Process or protocols. We need to do our homework by a certain time. We need to be prepared. Isn't that process, that template for process, already built into the law? 
I mean, there are certain timelines. If I come before you with a definitive subdivision, uh, this board has X amount of time. Uh, it only extends beyond that at my behest as the applicant. Yes, that's why we have these continuations. Well, no, 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 not. Well, that's not, why we. That's well, why we the have extensions, extensions for times. But, the, but the, ap the applicant is not in any position to say no. I'm not going to grant you that time because they know if they do that, we will then deny the application for some reason. So they're forced to give us these extensions. But then they can appeal. Yeah. Well, they, it, that they just, they, the that other just thing is, way of thinking. I just want. There's no reason to be thinking that way about these applications. We need to be, there's just. There's no reason too many other too many other well run boards do their work, do it really well, do it efficiently, do it effectively in two and three meetings. We we shouldn't I mean this again, this is procedure and bylaws and we should not be listening to an application until it's until it is one hundred percent complete and there's this checklist that goes from A to Z and if nothing if one piece is missing, the application is not entered mm. into the time clock. I'm all for that. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. that I will back you 100%. But, but, but I mean, that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. is part of our own problem with, with this. And so, do we really have numbers, though, on, in terms of how, how much of the delays are on us? And how much? How many are really on the applicants? Ooh, how many times have they been before us? Yeah. I feel like they, they've been here Palmer, too much. That Palmer, That's got to be at least six meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Correct me if I'm exaggerating, but that's the point. Is I don't know how many it's four numbers. units. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, well, they came. The preliminary was done, and it was that was done a couple of times. Um, I think that part of that is some communities have like um, a review prior to, and we and we do have some kind of an example of that, where all of those things and what other boards require the steps necessary and they hash it out mm. with the planner you know right. but you're probably familiar with that right. process that's correct. and that saves a heck of a lot of time and then once they've got it established they know more or less what the board would agree to and they are agreeable <laughs> to it so I, that'll I help agree. the smoothness of it you know the, the fact that we have a planner now yeah I think is going to help definitely <laughs> Definitely, I think it'll be a big improvement. Yeah, I'm gonna guess like, and I have no, I don't know the specifics, but I'm gonna guess Palmer Lane took so long because you didn't have a planner. You know what I mean? No. I was recused, I don't know oh, okay. the details. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think um, that's a tough one because of the nature of the project, but I think Healthy Farms was, uh, was a good example of, um, you know, we did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think we could, have, we could do those faster and quicker. And, uh, that was a sensitive one, though. That was but very that's, that's, that's <laughs> the first one, too. <laughs> very popular. Yeah. We were being and trying they, to be careful with that, and, that. and they were they were didn't seem to be in a rush either. You know. Um, Can I just ask? A, a, well, mentioned one at number nine on your your page. Uh, yep. Um, members bring questions, issues, concerns to a meeting, and not via email, phone, or the town planner. My my problem with this is that you know, we, we've seen this happen a bunch of times is one member will, will, will one member or another will bring in a specific concern that is is too complicated to do off the top of your head it needs research and it needs um, it, it needs a proper yeah. a, a, a proper planning for that conversation right how do we communicate that to the board I want to talk about mass general laws chapter 63 as it relates to this issue how do we re con convey that to the board so that everybody comes prepared for that so we don't have to just postpone it to the next meeting? I, I think the answer is yes and no. I think, unfortunately, it gets postponed. I think what we do, I think what we do is you have an issue, you bring it to the board, and you say, this is what I want to talk about, and that's the agenda item next week. And then... But that that's goes contrary Correct. to your, your previous the latest things, yeah. yeah. But how, so what's the, what's the, what's the but, problem but, with, me, with me saying to Heidi, I've gone through the packet. For our next meeting, I'd like to add this issue. Uh, and I'd like everyone to come prepared to discuss that issue. 
I don't think that's violating any open meeting laws. I don't think that's doing anything. It's, like it's not the open meeting laws, but I think what it's doing is it's it's allowing the agenda to open into any number of arenas for a meeting coming up, which can be an overload for the members to get prepared for. But if we have a public hearing on a particular issue, and there's there's an issue that one that one member or, or multiple members think are, needs to be part of that public hearing, I'm not, I guess I just disagree with, with that, because how do we have a proper public hearing if we can't have a, a meaningful discussion about something that... that well, I think, and, and again, I, I think the way to do it is, um, and I don't think this, it, it's an extension in terms of it goes to the next meeting, but the amount of time you have taken talking about it in that first meeting to make it aware to everybody is a minute. So in reality, it's not adding anything, it's a very efficient way of doing it, but what it, what it does most importantly is it gives everybody the same information at the same time so that then they have time to prepare for it versus all of a sudden in your packet, I get a packet that now there's an agenda item in there that I didn't know about that's coming from you, that and there's an agenda item in there that's coming from Bob, there's an agenda item that's coming from Harry that I don't know about, and it creates an agenda that we all now are responsible to research, get prepared for, and there may not be time to do that. Excuse me here. Are we discussing agenda items, or are we discussing um, issues that may arise in hearing? Issues that I was discussing yeah, issues that like may our, arise in that hearing. Right. That's what. And I know. Oh, uh, I, yeah. then I was misunderstanding what you were yeah. saying. Yeah. So, okay. so for example, if. Uh, with this Palmer Lane project. Yeah. One of us had researched and said, after we got the packet, it'd be really helpful if everyone <coughs> came prepared to discuss Mass General Laws Chapter 93. I, I, I don't know, I'm just picking a, a, a random <coughs> I guess I don't see how that sidetracks the agenda when we're talking about that particular public hearing that is going to be on for hearing that night. Oh, okay. Well, if you, I would say if you can get that into the packet, so then, yeah, I'll put some a more concrete example. Tilly brought some concerns two weeks, uh, two meetings ago, about some very specific bylaws uh, that I wasn't prepared to discuss at all because I didn't know that those were going to be issues that were going to be brought up in that public hearing. If she had, if she had been able to communicate with the rest of the board, these are issues that I'm concerned about. Not any further discussion than that. But then I, I felt like I could have come to more prepared right. to, at that public hearing right. to address her concerns or put my <coughs> communication in on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna try to read your mind, but I think I know what you're getting at. And there are things that will arise in, in a hearing and they can probably be clarified relatively easily by the planner. As long as the planner just has that information and has the ability to do that research mm -hmm. a couple of days before the hearing the continuation of the hearing. What Matt's talking about is, okay, let's say the, 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 uh, the PDFs for our, um, all of our info packet goes out on a Thursday night. Most people will open that up Friday morning. Um, at that point, you're reading it, or you're reading it over the weekend. If you have a question, I, this is just me, if you have a question or there's something that you want to add not to the agenda. Agenda item has to go mm -hmm. to the chair. That's yeah. clear. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have, let me call it an aspect of the law or the process or the hearing, and it needs clarification, from my perspective, it might need clarification through the planner. I would like to feel comfortable on a Monday emailing Heidi and saying, Heidi, how does this apply to Chapter 1, whatever? And maybe I don't receive that answer until I get to the meeting, but I'm not. But, I'm but not beyond that, so I agree with all of that. You know but, but then now, so now you're prepared and Heidi's prepared, but there's four other people here that aren't prepared because nobody knew that that was going to be a topic of the discussion in the public here. This is a great discussion. So, um, and we don't. We're not going to resolve it tonight. Um, so. One of my concerns is trying to manage um, Heidi and Heidi's time so that, you know, um, you know, 
she gets all of her, they get all of the stuff in the planning office, you know, um, uh, Turning Leaf submits their stuff at 11.47 and it's due at 12 <laughs> again. You know, it makes it really hard. And so we're gonna change that so they get it earlier. Um, I guess I just wanna know that we're managing these questions in a way that doesn't overload the town planner at the last minute going into a meeting. Um, and if everybody can do it not knowing what anyone else is doing, I don't know how you manage it. And maybe it's not something that you manage, but I am, that's a concern. Because um, we, we do share her with Affordable Housing Task Force and uh, Storm Drain Bylaw, the Economic Development. Now, it is the same restriction on these three committees that, that they can't do this, communicate? We're, we're, the, we're the most responsible for a planner, and we have decisions to make. Those are just committees that make recommendations, you know, and, and paperwork, you know, documents to record the affordable uh, trust uh, units. But it just seems that if you're going to limit communicating with her, honestly, in all fairness, all of my research, no other could I find put a restriction like that on the members of the board. I could not find that. And, um, and, and communication is the key. I mean, if we'll be good and things will be a lot smoother with, with a knowledgeable planner and communicating with her. I mean, I can't see how we could not and still, you know, have a, a streamlined process for the applicants. I mean, are we supposed to get some, a neighbor of an applicant to come in and ask? <laughs> you a question because we can't. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think I know what you're saying. So if we, <laughs> I don't know. If we can't ask the planner something, yeah. we're actually we're uh, we're stifling less, ourselves. We have less rights to talk to the planner than anybody else in the community. Yeah. Well, I, anybody can walk into our office at any time. Yeah. Well, I, well, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I, don't, I, don't I don't think that's at all what it's saying. I, it's not that you. I don't think that's at all what it's saying. It's just saying when you can talk to the planner. It's trying to manage it. There's a big difference, what you just said there. It's tough. It's a tough one. Um, well, it is a tough one, but it's an important one. Um, well, I think Heidi, if, if she reads well, what you presented, what I presented, maybe she can come up with some suggestions. Yeah, that. You know? I'm deaf. You know, so, so how could we? How could we for tonight? Kind of make what we just take this conversation that we had and make it worth something. You know, kind of wrap it up. And, and also may put it in a place where we're going to move it one step forward next time. And, and if I may, before we get into that, I just, my, one of the proposal that I have is um, I think either quarterly or biannually or something, we should have a purely administrative meeting, either schedule it as an administrative meeting and not schedule anything else, or schedule a third meeting for that month. Like a workshop? Yeah. Like a lock and have like a workshop. Right. I think that's great. Like a workshop. On the second floor. Wait. Yeah. Yes. To do what? Doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be <laughs> what? to talk about administrative issues of the board. The efficiency of the process. Oh. Efficiency of the process. It's this. It's this. this. Oh, yep. and, and big picture items. Um, what, you know, great. Uh, Good idea, man. Uh, <laughs> Septic, you know the the, the the septic, whatever it is, big, yeah, big ticket yeah. items. So we're not spending time with that yeah. in our in our main meetings, but we're also still dealing with those issues. Yeah. So I just added that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, quarterly meetings for general business kind of. Thing. And you know, we, we, a lot of the focus has been on efficiency of the hearings. Um, I'd like to make sure that. When we, when we think about that, we have some numbers. So we're not just saying, oh, it's too slow. Oh, it takes too much time. How long, what does the average take for a large development, for a medium-sized development, for a small development? It's not that we have that many developments that we can really do that, but we, we don't have any numbers at all. 
And maybe it's so tough to derive. Maybe yeah. it's maybe it's. Well, I mean, we can count the hearings. I mean, I mean that's pretty simple. How do you gradiate what the the, the complexity well, you, you of have, hearing? You say, is this a complex complex? Uh, is this a simple? I mean, it's we don't have to turn this into rocket science. But but I think if we want to improve, we need to have a sense of what are we improving. And I, I think and, and I think that's a good point, Bob, because I think one of the I think one of the um, flavors that that uh, that's with me around all of this is because this is what I do, and I see it mm -hmm. as I go to other towns. This is I have all this information, um, and so I can say just based on my experience, you know, three meetings. But that doesn't mean anything to the board. And so I think gathering that kind of information so that the board can understand it would be really helpful. And you know, maybe that's something that is a task that, um, that Andrea or, or, or Heidi can do where we look at the projects we have, just create a spreadsheet of projects, subdivisions, site plans, mm -hmm. you know, try not to be a dead horse, you know, big ones, little ones, medium ones. Five meetings, three meetings, and see what we got. See what we got, and yeah. get a sense for it. Um, okay. Because I, I, I do want to improve. Constant improvement. Excellent. The way you do that is you figure out where your problems are, and attack those yeah. problems. Yeah. And that, that's. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know. Um, okay. Organizing is good. So, um, what if, what if we. Would this, how, how, would this work where this makes it feel like we have actually not wasted our time just blabbing and that we're actually moving forward if we now establish our first quarterly meeting to, to begin this process? And maybe the way to do that is for you guys to, not tonight, you know, look at the calendars, look at the schedules, and then um, come to the next meeting. With a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a suggestion of what these meeting dates would be for us, and then. Okay. Um, and are we suggesting that it be a third meeting that month, or are we saying that it should be, we just take one meeting that month and say there's not going to be anything scheduled that meeting? I think it would have yeah. to be a third meeting that month. Yeah. Are you guys okay with that, ladies? I am. I am. I think it's great. I think it's. I think it's the best thing, it, and especially it's on the second floor. Whatever we have to do. We, yeah. we really, we're we're we've got a lot of housekeeping and okay. troubleshooting that needs to be done. Okay. We try not and to do it when the CPC meets the night <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. That's we're winding down the school know. building yeah. committee, so, so that, that was the right? So that, so, so that, yeah. that so, sounds so that's Tuesday. good. Thanks yeah. for that discussion. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, that feels great. like we made some progress but I do that. think this is a good direction to go into, to <clears throat> add some rigor to the process. Um, and I, frankly, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's all that loosey-goosey as it is. The, the process that, that, that you've Im implemented where, you know, we go to the, the, uh, the applicant, we go to the, to, the, to the house, we go to the... To hope, the hopefully what we can come up, I mean, I, hopefully what... I would like to think, and this again is just me, I'd like to think we can develop this protocol or how we run the meetings or whatever so that every time the planning board turns over, a new member understands how it works. I agree. And so that when we're gone, there's this system in place that's tried and true and it works and they don't have to reinvent the template. And, Three months know. before I had any idea what was going on here. Right. <laughs> well, you're picking it up fast. My third term, I still don't know. Just a quick question, though. Um, that meeting we were talking about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, does that touch on the general, what you had here, general policy number two? Uh, develop a one yeah. year and five exactly. year plan? Yes. Excellent. That's, that's, um, that's really all, all of it. That's right. all part of it. That's all part really. of it. Really? Yeah. We like that. So, the, okay. So, that was that. Then um, the last thing we had was um, we have the members. Um, but before we get to that, um, I shouldn't leave this till the end because... Uh, uh, it's, it's, I think, too important. But so I don't know if you all had an opportunity to, re to review um, the general manager of the light department's mm -hmm. response to our request. Um, and uh, I, I, I um, so this was hi, Andrea. I will be at a conference that evening in Foxborough and not be returning until the following day. 
If the planning board is talking about roadway lighting, there is no discussion to be had. I, I'm, I'm sorry, roadway lighting? This was... Um, Oh, I think there's a Palmer Lane packet. Oh, okay. I'm recused from Palmer. I can't so discuss you, this. Yeah, so, okay. I'm sorry. So, Should so I leave? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. I hate this conflict of interest. The appearance of Palmer Lane. So, 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 so Palmer Lane had that, um, has that nice little lantern kind of light fixture that they want to put in. It's okay. pretty residential. It's pretty homey. It's pretty nice. Oh, like Cedar Lane? Huh? Like Cedar Lane? Um, oh. Oh. Well, that's right, they do. Do they have them at Cedar Lane? Okay, but so that's probably a private road, Cedar Lane, is it? No. It's accepted. No, that's accepted for right. Cool. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like Cedar Lane. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so, basically, the board um, wanted to just ask. Um, the history was I had asked Dave if he would meet with me at night just to walk around town to talk about lighting in the town. And he said no. And so then, um, Palmer Lane and that one light fixture, uh, we wanted to have Dave come to the meeting to talk with us about that light fixture and you know, just to explain to us why they can or can do that light fixture just so we could better understand. Am I saying anything? So Andrea had sent him a, a note asking if, if he would do that. And he's saying that he can't attend because he has a pre-engagement, I get that. But I think the point that um, is that I underlined in red is that he's saying there is no discussion to be had. What he is saying is that the planning board has no, um, they, we have no discussion to have with the light department about their lighting. Hmm. That's what he's saying. Interesting. The, there was kind of a, a um, oh, how to say this? Right, there, there was a tension in this um, letter. And um, so I found that very distracting, actually. I didn't really understand what message he was saying other than there's no discussion to be had. That was very clear. Now, I, I don't think he's right. Of course not. Uh, so, I don't know how to compel him to enter into discussion. We're not the enemy, you know. It, this isn't a, this isn't an empire. This isn't a fiefdom that he owns the castle. So he's part of the town, and I don't know where the attitude comes from. So um, this is just, I'm only speaking for myself. <laughs> We're only I'm only, us are only speaking for ourselves. I'm only speaking for myself, and I'm I'm perfectly comfortable. Um, talking about this in this way. My experience, my personal experience with the Georgetown Light Department has been that whenever you start to ask them questions about roadway lighting, um, they close their doors and want nothing to do with that discussion. And for whatever reason, no one has pushed them hard on it. I what? I, I'm sorry, I, this is the first I'm really getting into this whole yeah. thing, but uh, I, I get it. He, in, in his opinion, there's no discussion to be had. He seems to be relying on, relying on something called the, uh, <coughs> the Georgetown Municipal Light Department specifications for the construction of residential developments fed by underground utilities. Evidently, this is a document or a series of documents? It's a document that the Georgetown Light Department has crafted on their own, okay. which is about the specifications for lighting that they install, which is what you currently see. I get it. And and according to Mr. Schofield, he believes that this has been forwarded to the board. It was forwarded uh, to the board when we asked him before about I don't hundreds of pages long. Yeah, it's just that it's, just yeah. it's just specs. Yeah, that's, hmm. I've never seen it either. It's, look, it's, it's, I don't know what printed it off because about. it's over 100 pages. It's, 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 oh my it's, goodness. Just, it's, it's, it's just specifications, Harry, and all it does is it says the light pole shall be this high, the fixture shall be this by by Hadco, it shall be a 60 watt medium quarter height, da, 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 wires like this, like that. It's specifications, it's one set. It's not about anything other than 
Um, it's about a uh, it's about the delivering and the construction of a light pole with a fixture in a certain way. I understand. I I get that. I, I build stuff. So yeah, we get it. That's what it is. So uh, I, are, are what we discussing here? Um, we it sounds to me like we we would want to um, we would first I'd first want to read it if I could get it in PDF. I'd really appreciate that if we already have that. And cool. number two, I would I would suggest that. Um, the planning board, um, as a board, would request not to Mr. Schofield, who's the general manager, but to the um, to the the commissioners of the light department. Mm -hmm. Well, might have to to um, ask them if they would if they would consider adding some specifications for some different lighting fixtures. And, and, but and then it's indicative of, of us to well, and give this them is that. and this is where I don't want to step on their toes, and this is where um, I'm not interested in developing specs for them. That's their job, that's their purview. Fine, no problem. But what I am interested in is how do they, for example, there are four basic lights that are currently being used in Georgetown for roadway. Um, one of them is a lead high. Uh, you know, really good high energy efficiency uh, lighting system. And unfortunately, the glare that comes from those lights is, uh, you, and this is according to, this is the language from the um, Illuminating Engineering Society of America, North America, 10th edition, which is the latest edition. It's the engineering spec for lighting that's used throughout the world, throughout the country. Um, they have this new rating system, which is a bug, B-U-G, backlight, uplight, glare. There's a whole formula for it. It's very complicated. In their evaluation of these fixtures, they use the word uh, physically disabling for the amount of glare that these lights are casting. Mike, I don't want to figure out how to do it. I don't want to step on their toes, but what I want to ask them is, how are they evaluating their, the glare issue? Are they even evaluating the glare issue in what they're doing? If they are, can they share with me how they're doing it? If these lights are producing this kind of glare, why would you not use a different fixture that does this with the housing so that you don't have that glare? I just want to have that dialogue and discussion so that lighting, which is half of the life of the town, right? Okay. And downtown lighting, and you talk about economic development, and you talk about little housing developments. You know, there's a there's a lot better way to do it than the way it's being done today. It's it, it sounds to me like uh, a board has done their due diligence. Uh, the commissioners, through their employees or through consultants, have created a specification for a certain type of lighting fixture. Um, from their perspective, from a purely maintenance perspective, yeah. purchase maintenance perspective, they they've got they a template. Have, they've got, they've a, template. got a template. They're and working with it, and it's worked it out. It ain't broke. It ain't broke, so don't fix it. And what I would argue is it is broke. Uh, you, you may say it's broke. Uh, I would I would reach out to the commissioners and I would ask them that even though this, in their opinion, may not be broken, would they consider? adding to the specifications for a different model, for a different type of lighting that would be used in certain, yeah. because I, I, don't, I think sure, if are, they have these I mean, specs, we, they we, can't deviate from them. Well, these are their specs. They can't unless they, they can't. develop new ones. Well, exactly. Right, and the general manager doesn't have the authority yeah. to do that. No, this yeah. is, no, this yeah. does have to go yeah. Yeah. back. Yeah. back. And, and yeah. the, the thing is, if it ain't broke, ain't the issue, because um, that's not the way you do improvement. Correct. That's the way you stagnate and wind up with a specification that's physically disabling. All right, and I've it's important. He's a town employee and yeah. town board, and we, I mean, maybe they have perfectly good reasons for using that light, and maybe he could explain that. And I just wanted, and that's what I want to yeah. hear. What's the reason? Right. So, so, so let's, would, re could let's we redirect could, our conversation. Could we, could we redirect it to the commissioners? Would the board be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work with Andrew, I'll work with Heidi, 
Um, I'm just transitioning now with the town plan. Yeah. Okay. I'm writing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Don't call me. I'll, 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 I'll drop uh, something and we'll just I'll bring it. We'll bring it to uh, the next meeting so you guys can see it before it goes to the yeah. commissioners. But basically, all this is going to say is we would like to have dialogue about this um, subject. Hmm. Yeah, and maybe not even we'd like to have dialogue. We we have some some questions. So that it, it's not that we're trying to offer input. We we just we don't know the answer to these things. Of course, we are looking to add input, but yeah. And and and, yeah, and, and if we if we're looking to add input, um, don't don't I, I, I'm always one that I don't like to go to someone with a problem unless I'm also carrying a solution with me. I agree. Um, I agree. What is the solution to this? And I don't have that technical knowledge that you obviously have. Yeah, so right. if you've got something in mind, I'm just we got a role. Maybe, maybe there's a review, review by process. The standards. Maybe there's a review process that could um, could be instituted um, on a periodic basis mm -hmm. to look at the configurations that are specified in the document. And maybe there's some that should be retired. We're not going to take them off the pole. We're not going to take them down unless they until they broke mm -hmm. until they're broken. So go, so go to, go to, to, there's two things if you guys have a chance to go see it. Go to Lisa Lane, right? That's a recent project that they did. And if I'm not mistaken, for Lisa Lane, they have LEDs. He's in. Yeah. Turn, yeah. Yeah. They have LEDs in. And they're, they're low-mounted fixtures. They're like 12 feet high. Um, you go, and as you come up to these fixtures, um, you know, Look and tell me, take a look if you can do that some night and tell me how they strike your eyes. What I will tell you is do not look at them for longer than 10 seconds because they, they, will, they, will, they will damage your eyes forever and it's a fact. That's right. Oh my they will damage your eyes forever and it's a fact. Well, how could they be LED lights? Well, LED, LED. is, the LED, LED, the industry, it, that's a LED. whole conversation. The, the industry is right now only on the cusp of energy efficiency and they are miserable when it comes to um, uh, color the ratings. Is well, the temperature, color temperature. That's the K value. Yeah, that's some. Um, I've seen some. There's the three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, and yeah. twenty seven hundred. Well, their only purpose is to create light and illuminate. And well, I guess it's a dull, all related to money. Sooner or later, it's going to get down to the buck. And yeah. I think that's probably but what we're going to hear. It can. It can be. Well, they can be nasty. The thing is, it all depends on how that. How it's measured. Right. It, 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 it is an economic issue. So, if there, if there are so that that's an example of a pole mounted fixture where I think there's a better if, if that is their standard for a lead lantern style fixture, which would be the same lantern style as um, Palmer Lane, i.e. this ten foot long pole mounted fixture versus your thirty foot high, you know, the Department of Transportation arm lighting fixture, which is the other type of roadway lighting that they do. Um, I would I would argue that there's another way to do that same fixture for them that is going to be that is going to resolve the issue of glare and yet give them what they need and be cost competitive. I, I would say that that's all available to them if they're willing to entertain that discussion. I, 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 I suspect that Mr. Schofield is in a position where is the answer tied because specifications well do not come from this has to do with they come from above and it comes from the three commissioners <laughs> yeah, no i i think your point's well yeah. taken i think it's i think so i will do that and you guys can take a look at it and sign off on that before we send it and, and i think it would be legitimate to say oops sorry you weren't the right person to ask this question of. yeah so we should well we I, should I think part i think part bob for, for, for the public and i have no problem saying this i think part of what you're seeing in that response and and i don't blame dave you know i mean when I called him up, I tried to do it in the way I've done it in the past, where it was just a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. phone call, you know, would you meet with me to go do this? And um, that conversation didn't go really well. And so I think there was carryover from that. And mm -hmm. that came out in there in that way, so. So a little loops. Yeah, um, yeah, well, yeah. But, <laughs> so, okay. anyways. Okay, so I think we're done for the night. Oh, no! We've got positions here. Buttons. All right. Yeah. So um, instead of his, let me ask people this: Who? I'm going to start with the chair, so that then the chair, whoever it's going to be, can take over and do the rest of this stuff. 
who would like to be the chair of the meeting versus people just saying, I nominate so-and-so. This is a little different way of doing it. Um, but I'd like to know who would like to be chair, and then we can talk about that. I'm going to say I would like to continue to be chair, and anyone else that would like to be chair can speak right up. So if no one else wants to be chair, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> then, <laughs> no, I don't. then if nobody, because I, I think this is the best way of doing it versus just a quick nomination without a true discussion. So if that's the case, then if we could do a nomination, then we can go through the other ones. Sure, uh, Mr. Chairman, I nominate uh, Ron, uh, Rob, Ron Hoover. Ron Hoover. <laughs> yeah. Ron. Mr. Robert Hoover uh, <laughs> as, uh, as chairman of the uh, Georgetown Planning Board. Um, Does that need a second? I think so. Second. No? No. 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 All right, so uh, we just vote on it. Uh, I'll I believe you would ask for any of the nominations. But nobody else wanted to. You would ask it. You would ask it All three right. times. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, but I thought I already did. You would ask it three times. But I did. It was in the beginning. Does anybody That's all right. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> we need Robert's Rules of Order. I don't know. All right. Kill me. So I'm going to ask it again. And this is probably the fourth time. You just want me to type. What, I know you just else? want me to type. Anybody else want to be the chair? Nomination. Chair. Okay. So with that being said. Um, seeing no other nominations. Uh, I guess all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, unanimous for that. So then let's go on to <coughs> vice chair. Who would like to be vice chair? Anybody? Oh, come on. Somebody's got to be. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it again if anybody else wants a turn. Okay. Tilly wants to. Anybody else want to? Okay. We're going to ask a second time. Would anyone else like to? What? We're just doing it. It's I'd like to nominate, if I may, I'd like to nominate Tilly Evangelista, Matilda Evangelista, to be the vice chair of the planning board. Okay, and uh, for the record, we'll ask a fourth time. Is there anyone else who would like to? <laughs> oh, does anyone else like to? Uh, all in favor of Tilly being vice chair? Next right. round. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Um, we have, uh, what else do we have? We have uh, clerk. Clerk. Who would like to be clerk? Then I'll jump up once. I also continue to be clerk. You will? Yeah. 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 Nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was sweating when I bumped it on you. It's, no, it's a, <laughs> You realize it's not that bad. It's, it's the lightest lift. You know? <laughs> Sign this. Is oh, my God. The humanity. <laughs> yes. Is there anyone else that would like to be clerk? Pen. I don't have my pen. Is there anyone else that would like to be clerk here? Okay, seeing no one else really wants to be clerk and Bob's stepping up there, uh, I motion or someone else can, can I move. nominate. I, I nominate myself. Yeah, no. Of course Let's I can ahead. nominate myself. We'll accept it. I nominate myself he did. to be the clerk of the Georgetown All right. planning. Board. So he's done it and, and we're in agreement. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Harry? Yeah, I, oh, okay, I, just making sure you weren't upstairs. All right, here's the <laughs> um, We don't have an alternate. Um, I think uh, CPC member is a three-year appointment, and you've still got time going on that. Is that right? I've got uh, another week. Another week. Three years is up? Yes. Yep. For a while, the website was showing, the, the town website was showing oh, just 18. Morning. I thought you had, like, Two years ago. No, yeah, but I went to. Uh, <coughs> I was with Kathy one time when I signed when I swore in the planning board. I asked Kathy to pull it, and she said it's uh, June 30th, night. Uh, this just mm -hmm. June 30th, 16. So it's another couple of weeks, and we have one in July. If someone would like to make that appointment. All right. So, um, who would like to uh, be uh, representative to the CPC? <laughs> is there anyone else that would like to be representative to the CPC? Is there anyone else that would like to be representative of the CPC? Representative to the CPC, anyone else? I'm totally jammed by being <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, Harry has appointed the uh, planning board's rep to the uh, CPC. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Appointment to expire. Three years from now. Uh, three years from June 13th. Yeah, July. 
What do we have? Merrimack yeah, Valley Planning Commission is an appointment, right? Yes, we do. Does anybody on the board want to be the appointment to the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission? Mr. Chairman, I would, I would make a motion to um, appoint Heidi Murphy to be the representative on the uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. Which I would strongly second. Can, 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 you, can she do that, though? Absolutely. I okay. think she's supposed to. All right. She's supposed to? Oh, okay. yeah, I, think it's I mean, it makes sense. You can have... I think it's on her job. We, we can appoint... I'm not sure. Our job is to, to appoint. We appoint the commissioner, and we also that appoint I the do alternate. Want to, yeah. you, that you do want to. I do want to, but I, would I, like, but, I would, I to but I would like to have an alternate. Yes. Okay. That's good. I good I luck think an alternate. alternate. <laughs> well, they, I think that's what every community does. They yeah. have an alternate. Yeah. yeah. That's the procedure. Okay. Yeah. So, so, all 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 so what are you doing? Well, yeah, I was going to say, uh, they're running out of things. Uh, no, 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 yeah, but that's nothing. So I'll, I'll, I'll be the alternate. That's fine. Right. Okay, so uh, nomination for Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Matt Martin to be the alternate representative to the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. Um, I'll put that expire. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else that wants to be the alternate? Anyone else that wants to be the alternate? I'm not going to do it a third time. Um, so, uh, all in favor? Matt? All time. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, we need to nominate uh, Heidi, uh, though, to be the CPC, uh, the uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commissioner. I'd like to. Should I make that? I motion? don't think we voted on that, did we? I don't think we did. I don't so think you. you so, do you vote on it? Because doesn't it go to Slackman? Don't you make a recommendation? Does it go to or we make a recommendation yeah, to Slackman? Right. right. We need we to vote it. Pretty sure we voted. Well, let's vote it, and then if that needs to be turned into the recommendation, yeah. the selectman is already done. Yeah. So, uh, I'll nominate uh, Heidi Murphy to uh, be the um, uh, planning board's representative to the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, hmm. Is there anything else? Yeah, there was, there was something else there. Oh, school building committee. Okay. Yeah. You still want to be on that? Yeah, but. Uh, I think for quite a while since uh, we started on the Pembroke, what happened was that we were on the feasibility committee and the planning board appointed that. Yep. And then Carol said he wants to be on it again, and they submitted the name to the selectmen. And that's how it's been ongoing like that. Oh. We're okay. winding down. So we are winding, winding down. down. There's not a lot left going on out there. Yeah, we're, we're having the. You know, I think up to at least a couple more months. I think the only thing that is of interest to the planning board, potential interest to the planning board, is is um, uh, what's going to happen with the money that they have not um, responded yet. Uh, that's still um, set aside, and they have this list of items they still need to do. Right. And if they're if they're going to decide that these items, even though they're basic to a brand new school, they're not going to take the money that was voted by the town for the school, yeah. I think that's of interest to people. Well, it's, it's kind of a, a legal issue because if you are <coughs> going to request anything that wasn't on the contractor's contract, then then you run into, and I believe yeah, yeah. Mike, so Mike and, and town council are reviewing, reviewing that. You know what we could put on. Because there is some money left over, and uh, we're wor we're working on a final punch list, and we're working on the fields, you know, for the grade. So, so I, I think in that regard, you know, um, one of the things that would be nice is to have as part of our meetings is to have, you know, Harry to you know to take a one minute just update the board of what went on at the last CPC meeting, um, and and uh, so that the board members and Tilly, you take a one minute. To what okay. went on, and, and you can do the same, Heidi, on Merrimack Valley Planning okay. Commission meeting, so that we just know what's going on with these committees. Mm -hmm. So, do you want you still stay the school building committee? Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyone else want to do that? Okay. Uh, nomination. I'll uh, make a nomination to um, <coughs> appoint or recommend to be appointed, whichever it is, um, to the Angelisco to the school building committee. Uh, okay. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I think that's. Um, we'll give you I think that's it. <laughs> um, actually, I believe we missed one, and um, 
the capital improvement planning and committee. Oh, right. It's um, I believe it's a three-year appointment, and um, mm. the name that I, I don't really remember who we have appointed to it, but we did appoint someone. Harry, how would you describe the responsibility of CIP? To my understanding, the CIP has the responsibility of the actual capital improvements that come to the town. Anything over, I believe it's anything greater than a $10,000 uh, expenditure and anything with a 10 oh, years, isn't a it? A 10 year life. Yeah. Um, Over 10,000 in 10 years? So this that, is that's my infrastructure. This is infrastructure. Uh, this is if we needed a new roof on this on this building. Right. Uh, if we needed to, <coughs> well, I don't know, because it might be an you know, like an enterprise fund or something and for if it was uh, the water department. But um, if the public safety building needed a uh, new door. Is a, is a new park considered that? Yeah. Is that capital improvement? Um, I don't honestly know. I really don't. I heard of what yeah. is it's usually so, so help? Uh -huh. I, I again, this this is all very closely related. They, I believe, they directly report to the FinCom for the Finance Advisory Committee, and um, they actually create um, a. Um, what's called the capital improvement plan for the community. 8,000 people in the town. Confusing. 400 different committees. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that's where the, I believe that's where the FinCom 16 takes. different volunteers. <laughs> Those are the warrant articles, the capital improvement. I believe that's where the, yeah. the, the FinCom actually takes their priorities when they're talking about where they're gonna if they're gonna put money into a, a fire engine if they're gonna put money into this into that um, when, it, when it's a capital project <laughs> Trucks. This that's is, my understanding this this is this is to, to Matt's point I mean look this is where the volunteer system breaks down then there's just not enough volunteers there's too much expertise required to to do this this is where you need some person who's that's why we need a planner that's why we need a planner and why other i guess and i would imagine there's a fair bit of overlap between fincom and c the cip 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 reports to fincom they are the investigative how would you describe the difference describe the difference between cip and cpc Oh, it's enormous. Different. So yeah, how, how, oh would my God. You, how would you describe Where you get it? The uh, well, there's a whole letter different. Uh, but um, uh, a CPC is Community Preservation Committee. Right. And we need a whole they, meeting for a discussion of that. Yeah. Um, whereas the CIP would create, would would talk to the, the CIP would talk to the fire department and say, okay, When's the next time you're going to have to replace your ambulance? Talk to the fire to the police chief. When do you need more cruisers? Um, fire department, uh, where, where what what's your equipment necessary? Okay. Uh, would speak to uh, they talk to the, the highway, highway department. department. Okay. When do you need a new? Um, I think it's the other truck. way around, though. Uh, if I interject either, there, because either way, the, the different either departments way. come to the CIP. They don't go to these departments. Right, but it's an investigatory yeah. and so, dialogue. And so, that, so that that's the CIP, yes, and then they, the CPC, though. They, they say, here's here's everything that you're going to need to replace in the next five year, 10 year, 15 okay, years. Okay, so I get that. Here, now take that. That goes to FinCom. Right. Now FinCom is the information to make their recommendations and advisors. So CPC. CPC is nine member board um, appointed by planning, by our various boards in the town. Uh, they are a recommendations board. They um, receive every year, they receive a certain amount of funding from the state. Right. The state usually tries to match through the um, Community Preservation Trust. Yeah. They, try to, they try to match from the state. The money's come from what's locally uh, collected uh, every year. And then those 
monies, though, are directed not to capital improvements, but to new projects? Uh, they would be directed to historic projects. resources, yeah. open space resources, and, affordable, and, uh, and community housing. Historical. Open space and community, community yeah. housing. And, and sometimes that does involve a capital improvement. Sometimes it does not. That's dictated by state law, whereas the capital improvement is not. It's more local. Capital improvement is a bylaw. It's a bylaw, but the CPC is, is uh, the CPA is a state law. Chapter four. Call, what call me crazy, but I would love to see someday a three ring binder that there's this one page in there which has these committees with a definition beside them of what they are. And so <laughs> someone becomes a new member. You're talking you, government, and it's like and stacks. You, and, you give, and you give them this three ring binder, and here's the, here's the, here are the job <laughs> descriptions of the planning board, what the chair does, what the clerk mm. does, what this does. Yeah. And yeah. I'd just be happy if I could go on a town's website and actually find. Updated and up to date oh, law, I bylaws. So I got ones that are two years behind <laughs> and don't reflect. And now you get engaged. Don't reflect <laughs> the changes that have been made in the last right. two years. Mr. Chairman, I, 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 I agree. I move we adjourn. I second. You, I was going to say that you have a motion to move the meeting to the next meeting date. Six months, and, and yeah, I believe the personnel manual explains uh, three months. Oh, the okay. Probationary period. I think there's a, yeah. a whole. Is that what it is? Yeah, okay. No, yeah. I think the only thing I, I don't even remember that, but I think the only thing that that's about is just to be aware that that would that re, in, that review It'll probably take us more than six I months. Know. But <laughs> we'll be doing that. what about like the stormwater committee and economic development committee before we adjourn? Stormwater committee. We don't represent. Uh, we don't represent. We're not required. Oh, it's not a requirement of ours. And you mentioned really? the affordable housing trust, huh. but that we do. Don't worry. You're do either not representing the plan. No. Hmm. You mentioned the affordable housing. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think that's how you as well, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I'm yeah. already. Going. I think that that committee was is formed by the. Okay, so she's taking over now that she's here versus the conservation guy, Steve. Do you no. want us to? No, I don't, but do we need to, uh, think the board appoint, health do we need to appoint her officially, or yeah. is that just already done? Do we need to appoint you as the representative or not? I think it's her job description. Yeah, it's her job description. Good, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. It and those be, other ones are not required. Okay. As far is there names listed yeah. on this door? So. There are, yes. Who's uh, on it? She uh, has been moved in second. Yeah, she has been moved in second. Who's seconded? I, I seconded, but I withdrew my second because Tilly had a question. Okay. Oh, seconded. All right. So, so now who's been, seconding? It's been re-seconded. By who? Matt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, any more discussion? No more discussion. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Aye. Aye.